patients in waiting to be sent to us. With me is uh, Mr. Ndani and Mr. Siemo. I'm Luis Utieno. We are cancers for GB and GKX families. As you may be aware, last night there was an intensive search in this residence. The police did say who they are looking for, what they are looking for. And uh, that team was really swagged at 4 a.m. in the morning. And they took an inventory of everything that they thought will assist them in the investigations. What they took were three flags, uh, iPhones, iPads, uh, a receipt of total energies. That is all that the state at that time deemed to be criminal evidence to use a criminal court. Subsequent to that, at around 6 a.m. in the morning, a new team of over 100 officers, all of them armed with AK-47 assault rifles, all of them, their faces covered, conducted a further raid in this residence, and they assaulted members of this family. They equally stole, what I call it, that was a, a robbery in this home in the morning. They stole from everybody who was in the home. I'm the lawyer, my car was here. They stole my wallet with all its contents, including my business cards, my credit cards, my debit cards, my money that was in that wallet. They stole from the servants. They stole from Jimmy Wanjiki's own mother from her wallet. They took her money. They stole from Jimmy Wanjiki's wife. They stole from Jimmy Wanjiki's children. Watches, jewelry, money, anything that was deemed to be valuable was stolen from this house. Then at some point in the morning, they declared that they purported to have recovered 300 grenades, uh, vests, helmets, and walkie-talkies. Nobody saw them when they got those items, but what we know from the evidence we have, from the CCTV that we have, they actually planted those items in this home. When the comprehensive inventory was done last the, the previous night, it had shown what was discovered. But this team that came and stole from the residents of this home are the ones who planted those new items. That is what they went to town with. And I must say this, we've also equally gone to the High Court of Kenya, and the court has issued a comprehensive order. That order is to the effect that they are restrained, the DPP, the Inspector General of Police and the Director of Criminal Investigations are restrained by law from arresting, detaining Mr. Jimmy Wanjigi whatsoever. And for good measure, even if he was detained, he was in a, under arrest, the court has directed that he should be released forthwith. That order is available and we expect the state we do believe there are state elements with the state who believe in the rule of law to obey that order. And they should stop interfering with the personal liberty and the free movement of Mr. Jimmy Wanjigi. And we are inviting our clients to exercise those rights that he has to liberty and the freedom of movement and to act in compliance with that court order. The state cannot arrest him up to this particular point. And even if they arrested him, they are now being directed to release Mr. Jimmy Wanjigi Fourth. Thank you very much. I think you understand. Uh, you talked about an uh, inventory of what is taken from these residents. Can you account in terms of why you are pursuing charges? We are going to pursue charges against the state because the people who stole from these residents in the morning were officers of the state. And they refused to inventorize, to write down the monies they were taking. I'm telling you, they were stealing from servants who are working in this home. These are people who are trying to make a living. The little that they have in their wallets was being taken out and uh, the, the, the officers were going with. Even their watches were being taken. Anything that was deemed to be of value was taken out of everybody. From the man at the gate to the old lady, Mrs. Maina Wanjiki herself, who has been staying here, was robbed of her money and her watch. Maina Wanjiki Jr. was robbed. They took away his watches and his jewelry. Mrs. Irene Wanjik, they took away also our watches. Myself, Willis Otieno, advocate of the High Court of Kenya, they illegally broke into my car and stole 
my wallet that had my credit cards, my debit cards, and a worth of cash, which they know about. The interesting thing about my vehicle is that last night when we did the inventory, pictures were taken of my vehicle everywhere, and they saw the man that was there. They then decide to come back and steal from my car, an officer of the court. If they steal from an officer of the court who is only doing his duty, who else can they steal from? How will they respect the court processes? We are now calling upon those who are still within the establishment that believe in the rule of law. You now must obey the court order. Do not arrest Mr. Wanjigi, and if you've arrested him, kindly release him to enjoy his freedom of liberty and movement. Thank you, members of the press. Can I sympathize with the police? Talk. I think I'm visible. Very well. My name is Mwanda Jage. I'm part of the legal team for Mabutin Mwanjigi, and I act alongside Mr. Osimo and my senior Mr. Willis. I'll just be very brief and say that a man or a woman's house is his castle. That card no rural magazine is that any state agency or enterprise should exercise a lot of restraint before entry or seizure of such an entity. What you happened here is very regrettable. The events that transpired on the uh, morning of the 8th, culminating in the morning of the 9th today, are highly regrettable on four grounds. One is that the multi-agency operation that was carried here yesterday did that in the absence of any valid court order or any court order whatsoever granting such an access or such a warrant of such. The reason I say that is that if indeed the police or any agency was of the considered view that there are items here of great public safety of concern, the decent and the honorable thing to do was to move the requisite court, pursue and obtain a court order and then my client would have a chance to respond to it. What we saw here yesterday is a wake-up call to every right-thinking member of our society because if it can happen at the residence of Modega 44, then what about the common 190? And it's highly regrettable that as a civilized society governed by the rule of law, the police can come over, bungle up innocent children in total violation of the rights of the children, in total violation of the rights of the aged persons, if indeed they are seeking uh, Jimmy Wanjege, criminal culpability is not transferable. What does the watchman have to do with it? What does my friend uh, uh, Willis have to do with it? Secondly, and very importantly, what happened here is what we have happened is the weaponization of our politics, whereby if you hold a contrary view, you are deemed an enemy of the state. And I want to say that the, power, that the powers that be, sometimes your greatest friend is your, is your critic because he's able to put you back to stay on the, on the straight and narrow line. That really very importantly, uh, what has been going around that my client may be financing or supporting the Gen Z movement. I wish to emphasize and mention this way. Gen Z is not a proscribed group, is not, not an illegal entity, it is not gazetted as such by the relevant Ministry of Interior. There is nothing illegal, either through finance, either through participation, or through lending any aid to the Gen Z movement, because it is, you are right, within the confines of the law. So those people who have been demonized and been told that you are financing Gen Z, your answer is today. It is a resounding yes. You can finance, you can associate, and you can picket. There is nothing illegal towards it. If the state deems that Gen Z is a legal entity, the decent and the legal thing to do is to move the requisite uh, channels of law and gazette it as such, just like other proscribed groups that we know have been gazetted, including Mongeki and Al-Shabaab, but Gen Z has not as yet. So there's nothing illegal to add that. Fourthly and lastly, I wish to thank the members of the press because were it not for you, and that is what we call the freedom of, uh, the freedom, the, the freedom of information. It is because of your uh, forthrightness and your coming over that this matter has, 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 has toned down. We also wish to thank our friends, uh, Mother Karwa Senior Council, and uh, the Prime Minister, Honorable Raila Odinga, 
was here today and it is after that that they insisted that the people who are here should record a statement and what we found very interesting is that you cannot convert Monega 44 to be a police station this is not a gazetted police station what is so urgent that the police want to come outside the gate and ask all of all the people who are inside here to record statements we told them the decent thing to do and i think they have complied is if they think they want statements let them issue a summons we will present our clients to the relevant police station and we shall meet in the court of law i think mr osiemo will speak to the question about court orders thank you very much